Hey there, Chad here. Thanks for joining me. This is Ostronauts, and this is my second in a series of tutorials for the game based on the current build, which is 0 0.13, 0 0.13. And at the end of the previous episode, which was the character generation, I had mentioned that I was probably going to go back and redo the character, and you'll notice that I did. He looks quite different. This is uh, more of a I don't know, he looks a little more like Eminem or something, I suppose. Uh, long story short, I tried to select pretty much the same skills in general. It is up to the RNG as to the order things come in and, and what makes sense and whether or not you even get some of the uh, options. I'm not sure that I got all the options that I wanted, but it was it, it got me close. Let's learn about inventory management and how to move around. The goal of this will be to get the starter equipment that they want us to have, learn a little bit about how to work with the different, I'm going to call them kiosks. They're the places where you buy and sell stuff. Uh, and we will ultimately get to our ship, and that's where we'll end this particular episode. We start on the station, and we are in our room. We have a room assigned to us, and that's great. This is roughly the extent of the entire station. This is our ship right here, actually. And that is where we're going to head eventually. But want to do a few things before we get there. Now, one thing I want to point out is I do have the tutorial turned on and it basically is objectives that it asks you to do. They are very helpful for your first time through. I went ahead and left them on. There's no reason to kill them. You can clear these out by hitting the X here. That does not kill the objective. It just hides it. The place to go and kill them permanently is you go to goals and then you hit the X here. Now, missions will also show up here. We're, we're going to be offered some missions as we go. Uh, possibly our parents might ask for some help on something. You're not obligated to do those missions. They're also gigs is another word for them. You can, you, it's a different kind of mission, I guess. But ultimately, some things will pop up here. We don't necessarily have to follow them. Once I click this, though, that particular one won't come back. Now, if you're following along with me, we're not going to do things in the order that it expects. So there are going to be a few times I'm going to clear those clear those out. So right now it wants me to go and turn this on, but we're standing here with some clothing around us. We're going to look at inventory first. I have mapped the back quote, I think is what they call it. It's the key above tab and to the right of one on a standard keyboard. I have mapped inventory to that as well as the I key. Uh, that way I can keep my left hand effectively on the keyboard to do most of the work with the keyboard and I can use the mouse to point at things. Also important to know space, pauses and unpauses. And then uh, you can use the, bra the square brackets to accelerate time up to 16 times and decelerate time down to a quarter of a second. Uh, and that's basically how much time passes per second is, is what it really comes down to. We're gonna leave it at one for now. Time is not a major factor in the game. We pay for things like for a day. We will, in one day, we will probably have built out our ship quite a bit. We will probably have explored several derelicts and wrecks, salvage them, sold the parts, come back for more, and that'll all be before midnight. And it's almost two o'clock in the afternoon on this particular game day. This is roughly where you start every time. Most of the startup stuff is identical, and that's important to know. There are going to be some bins in here, which are basically uh, containers. They will have different things in them, but there are a few things that are always in the same places, and we're going to cover those so that you make sure you get the basics that it wants you to have before we get to our ship. All right, let's talk about inventory real quick. I'm going to hit the, um, the inventory button, and this pulls it up. So right now I'm in my skivvies. I do have a shirt on. I have a PDA in my hand. The PDA is does play a part. It's not crucial, but uh, it is how you open locked doors and things like that. Uh, also, it allows you to rename your ship. We'll do that eventually. When you open inventory, you'll notice you have a slot for a backpack. We don't have a backpack yet, so we don't get any kind of opening for that. All we see is what's on the ground right now because we don't have any inventory slots on us. So what we're going to do is basically right click on each of these items in here. We can, we can either do it here or we can close the inventory and do it on the screen. So that's kind of important to know. The ground, you're basically standing right here in the center, and this is the stuff that's around you. Open spaces are places where stuff can be put. You can only put one thing on a space for the most part. Um, so these blacked out ones have, they're, they're blocked because of things. Um, for instance, the toilet is here, the sink is here, um, there's some open space, and then this is wall. So that's why we can't put stuff there. Now, the, if you look here, there's a light. 
there can be a light on the wall and you still have space there. There, there, are, there are a few things, there will be some bins that'll hang off the wall, but we can still put something under them. That is a possibility and something to pay attention to. Let's talk about what we can see real quick. I'm gonna close the inventory again. Uh, we can see this is a toilet that we can use. This is a sink. You can get water from a sink. Um, on derelicts, sometimes you get things other than water from a sink. First thing we want to do, though, is interact with the environment, move around a little bit. So I'm going to unpause and I'm going to left click. Left click is how you move. It's that simple. OK, right click is how you interact with things. And I'm going to right click on this shoe. And you'll notice I get, I can bash the shoe, I can pick it up, or I can equip. I'm going to equip it using one. One tends to be your primary action button. Uh, for things like clothing, it's equip. For things like containers, it's inventory, which opens it for you so you can look at it. So we're going to put on that shoe. I'm going to right-click this shoe, put it on. Now, I'm going to right-click on the jumpsuit, but it's not going to go to the jumpsuit first. It's going to go to me. And that's because multiple things can be in a hex. Now you can only, or a square, and you can only put one thing in a square for the most part, but that doesn't mean there can't be multiple things in it. So right now I'm in the square, the coveralls are in the square, and then the square actually also has floor. And that's what's below it. So as I right click each time, it goes to the next item. You'll notice that's listed up here. So I start it with beach, I right click the second time it went to coveralls if i right click a third time it'll go to the floor and the context menu changes each time that's what's important to note finally most things have a compartment um, th that's outside of the scope of what we're going to talk about you don't need to worry about the compartment too much at least not yet however one thing to note compartments tend to have names of people and that's really weird to me i don't know why they did that but it can be confusing when you're interacting with folks. You might accidentally get on the compartment and it'll look like you're talking to a person and you're not. So do keep that in mind. But we're gonna go ahead and continue to cycle through. I went to beach and then back to the coveralls and we're gonna equip the coveralls. Hit one and he's now wearing the coveralls. And if we go and look at inventory, now he has a couple of pockets he can put things in. Now I tend to not use the overall pockets too much. A couple of reasons. First, the overalls are the most basic clothing. We're going to want to get cargo pants. Those are more helpful. They have bigger pockets. They have more pockets. We will have a backpack here in just a moment. When you take this off, though, anything that's in a pocket will disappear with it. It stays in the pocket, and that's fine, but we close inventory and go back in. Notice, where did the PDA go? Well, it's it's in the coveralls. So we can either right click it here or here. I'm going to right click it there. And you'll notice like coveralls, I don't have an inventory button to open them. I have to actually put them on and then I can look at the inventory that's in it. So just something to note that's a little bit of a peculiarity. A lot of the things will have an inventory when they're on the ground. Clothing doesn't seem to have that. Okay, so let's move around here. Now, the first thing, that first alert over here that popped up said it wanted us to turn on the lights, basically. This is a power switch. It's got the one and the zero. We right click it and there's a toggle power. Now you notice when we float over it and we selected it, it says that it's off. I can also hit X. X gives me detail about any space I'm on. It effectively shows how damaged something is. But when I float over here, you'll notice it's power switch off. Basically, this also shows everything that's in that stack. So if we sit and we look at the, the toilet here, we got the toilet and the floor. Here we'll have sink. There's a wall light in this hex. Uh, and then there's floor. Here there's just going to be light and floor. And also, if we look at the walls, the walls will have conduit, wall, and floor often. Okay, so there's just several different things. Right-clicking toggles through those things. There's somebody walking up there. All right, so we're going to... Go back over here. I clicked a second time. I obviously don't want the floor or the compartment. So I click back around to the power and I'm going to hit one and that's going to turn on the lights. So lights came on in my room. Okay. Now again, here's another one of the tutorial things. I'm just going to close those for now. And later I'll go into goals and clean them all up. So we're standing right here. It's going to move to the center of the room. These are beds. You can sleep on a bed. Um, just so you have some idea of what we're looking at here. This is another sink. This is a refrigerator, a table. This is a toolbox. This is a rack. Now, important are these things here, bins. Bulkhead bins basically hang on walls and things can be under them. So this bed is under 
the bulkhead bin. The bin is a container. If I right click on it, it's going to have an inventory slope. We're going to we'll come back to that in just a minute. The first thing we want to go to is the rack. Depending on your character build, you may have been given a tote bag. And you can use the tote bag as a backpack. But if you didn't, you will always have one here in your rack. It's this third item. It's a company loyalty bag. Some of the events will give you an, a second one. It's not the worst thing. You can't put a tote bag in a bag, unfortunately. So you can't really carry it around conveniently. You can put it in your hand and carry it that way. That's fine. You can have inventory in it, um, but you're putting it down a lot. You can also drag things, but it changes the graphic and he moves much slower. You'll notice he literally pulls the bag around the room with him now. All right, let's go back here and get everything else out of that rack. So we grabbed the bag. We're going to use it as a backpack for now. We also have a pressure suit helmet. We're going to put that here and a pressure suit. And if you're asking yourself, why did he put those things on the ground and not put them in the bag? Can't he just put them right in the bag to carry around? He must be some sort of genius and know something that the rest of us don't know. And it's a secret in the game that he's going to explain. And then we're going to understand it. And we will be masters of this particular game. That's not what's going on here. Uh, I screwed up and I noticed it in editing. I dropped those things on the ground, not in the tote. I don't know why I did that other than you just start doing something and you're not paying attention. Uh, please note that those should be dropped in the tote, not on the ground. Don't put stuff on the ground out of the rack, put it in the bag, at least early. There are reasons you put things on the ground. This isn't one of them. So, all right, enjoy the rest of the video. We also have this toolbox here. This is the third important thing. I'm going to right click that and open its inventory and it has three tools in it. Here it's inventory open. It has a soldering iron, a hacksaw, and a screwdriver. We can take those out and put them in our backpack individually. Alternately, what I can do is carry that. Now, the reason I want to carry it is you'll notice it took two spaces on the floor, but it holds three things. So we gain a spot of floor space basically by using that. We can put small things in it, not large things. And you might have noticed we can't put it in the backpack when we try to drag it, it blocks all those things out, but we can carry it by hand. We could also drag it. Uh, I don't recommend that, it slows you way down. Okay, there we have it. Now we have three more things we wanna pick up on our way before we get to our ship. I'm gonna close inventory and we're gonna go ahead and walk out. When we walk out of this room, first of all, we can always come back to it. Um, but when we walk out, we're going to get a dialogue. And this only happens the first time you leave the room for the most part. Uh, it tells you a little bit about the story and the back, the backstory of everything that's going on. It tells you where you are and it, it provides some atmosphere. I suggest reading it. I am not going to read it to you. But basically, when you get these pop-ups, you have a list of actions here you can take. You select the one you want. Most of them I've seen so far, the only thing you can do is continue. And you hit confirm and it'll move you on. We can follow the signs to the airlock, and that would be completely fine. But I happen to know that if we come down here, we can get one more tool. It's kind of hidden over here. Now, this is a door, and we can't go through the door. And if we right click it, we can't open the door because there's no power to the door. It won't allow us to do it. Uh, we could try to pry the door open, but we don't have a prying tool yet. We could try to access the lock, but we, our PDA is not set up to do that yet. So what do we do? Well, it turns out there's a power switch here. And if we right click on that power switch and turn on the power, it turns on the door. Now we can walk through the door. Over here is a pry bar, a crowbar. And I'm gonna pick that up and it put it in our backpack for us. Just that easy. Okay, that's one tool we wanna grab. Now we could come over here and go through here to get to the airlock. But there's one other thing that's up here. It wants us to kind of teach us how we install things. So we're gonna do that real quick. And we're gonna walk around the corner. I could speed time up and he'd walk twice as fast, but I'm gonna hold off on that. So they have this piece of conduit laying on the floor and it says install. What we do to install something is we right click on it. Okay, let me take one step back. Uh, right click elsewhere. You'll notice around it, there are these triangles on the corners. That means it's loose. It's not something that's installed in the floor right now. What we can do is right click it and down here, one of our options, we can pick it up, but we can also install it. We're going to install, which is three, and it gives us this dialog. Now hitting R will rotate things. A lot of things have 
direction that is important. This does not. So hitting R doesn't really do anything for us. We're going to drop it here where it's kind of pointing. And what it basically does is it completes the circuit so that this door will be powered. Once that door is powered, uh, we'll be able to go in there and get a couple more things. This thing right here, five times, that's pretty good. That's how fast we install something. That's based on our character and the tools that he has available to him. It can go up much higher. When it is one time, you will wish it wasn't. It'll run really, really slow. So we're at one time speed right now. And you notice it took like five cycles for it to complete. He has now completely installed that. I could have sped up time. It would have gone faster, but more time would pass. Okay, we're in that room. There's no light in this room. But there's another rack. We're going to right click on that rack. And in here are two more things we really want. We really, really want this uh, welder. The welder is very important. We're going to put that here. And also a tactical knife. We are going to go on derelicts. And some of those derelicts will have pirates on them. And the pirates will try to kill us. Or they'll at least try to rob us. And if we don't give them what they want, they will try to kill us. I'm going to clean these up real quick. Uh, actually, one quick second here. These are missions that are being offered to me from contacts I have. I'm going to skip it for now. They will stay in our goals. We can go back and look at those later. Okay, so pirates. Pirates will try to kill us. So the reason I selected instigate violence was so that I would get the unarmed attack and the armed attack, armed melee attack, on my character. And so in the previous video, I had selected that as one of the options. But what it does is if you don't have that and if you're feeble the amount of damage you do when you try to hit somebody is one quarter of normal when you have the appropriate skills and you have a weapon and you're not feeble and you're potentially strong you can do something like eight times normal damage so the, I, the first playthrough i did i did not i shouldn't say playthrough the first time i played uh the first time i experienced pirates i had to fight for like 20 minutes in, or, in order to finish them off because i couldn't do enough damage and i kept getting tired i had eventually knocked the guy out he's laying on the ground and i couldn't finish him off <laughs> that was that was uh miserable it took it took like 20 minutes once I started taking the unarmed combat and the armed combat, those battles are a little easier to resolve. Now, I don't think that the, the combat is at all necessary in the game to begin with. I understand from a flavor perspective why it's there. It's not something I look forward to. I normally wouldn't build a character for that specific reason, but it is a time sink if you don't have those abilities. So that's just something to know. All right, we're going to walk through here and you're going to see like text popping up here. And what turns out is these are people like listening to a television or watching TV monitors in a waiting room. So we have some food vendors here, street vendors. We can pick up food. Their food tends to be expensive. I have not tried it yet to see exactly what happens. We will see rations in a lot of the ships that we look at. All right, so we're going to follow this around to here. Now, like I said, our ship is here, but the very first thing we're going to do, I want to show you how these, these kiosks work. There's about six kiosks here that we want to know about. I'm going to start down here. We will come back to this one and actually open it in a bit, uh, probably next episode before we shove off in our ship. But supplies is where you get some basic things. You can get containers, you can buy tools, things like that. I don't think you typically sell things there. I'm not sure I've seen anything that you sell. These are both kiosks as well. In fact, I missed this one entirely. And at the end of your shift, which is, uh, I think it's 6 p.m., at the end of your shift, uh, it's going to charge you interest on your loan and things like that. And you have to pay it through one of these. Um, at least I think that's where you pay it. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not 100% sure, but you absolutely pay your docking and refueling here. Uh, and I missed that entirely the first time. I couldn't figure out how to how to get more fuel in my ship. Turns out it's this station here. If you right click it, there's a use and it will give you a little menu to, to work with. We're gonna skip that for now. We currently don't have a license. We have enough money to buy one. And if we right click license, we can see that we can buy one for 5,000. We're gonna skip that for now. There's a little trick that early on in the game will sometimes work for us. We can look at information about the license. It will basically tell you the licenses are good for a day. And we could trade at this counter, but we don't have anything to trade. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have a license, so they won't really talk to us. We can open it, but nothing really happens. We're gonna use this uh, We Buy Scrap <laughs> table here, but first I do wanna talk about this guy. This is the transit kiosk. And we're gonna go ahead and look at it real quick. You get one to activate it. 
it's a subway map and it will take you to these different departments now i don't know um I don't know what the plan is. I don't know if these are, you know, coming soon kind of things in the roadmap or what, but we have access to the port, which is where we're at. That's where our ship docks. We can go to the old Emporium. This is where the black market is. There's a couple of other things there too, but that's the important one. And we can also go to the commercial center. This is where the port authority is. Sometimes we might have missions that run there. Uh, you can also go to pay your docking fees there in person. It takes more time than using the kiosk. Those are some of the options that you have there. We're not going to go actually use this right now, but I wanted to show that. Once we have something to sell to the black market, we'll go visit that and, and I'll show you how that part works. For now, we just have a couple of t-shirts to sell. So we're going to click this, we buy scrap, and we're going to hit one for trade. And this is the trade interface. First of all, it pauses you when you first come in here, and that's important. It shows you the things you can buy. The scrap table or desk doesn't have a whole lot of useful stuff initially we may need to fix a battery that needs a motherboard so we might want to come back and buy a motherboard or something like that we may want to change some of the conduit in our ship and so we might use some of these to move that stuff around um, outside of that though not a whole lot in here that we might want to buy initially there sometimes could be food rations in here too although i haven't seen that in a while what we want to do right now though is sell the sell uh couple of things to know here. First of all, items with a star are equipped. You're currently holding them or wearing them. And everything it considers a container in this, at this level for the most part, including like your shoes, which I don't fully understand, but you typically don't want to sell your shoes. The only things we want to sell right now are a couple of shirts we picked up. Now, this is the shirt we're wearing. We're going to leave that one alone, but we can open our tote and this is where we had put those other things. So we're going to go ahead and sell that. We're going to keep the drink. We definitely are keeping the pressure suit and helmet. We're keeping that. We're keeping that. We're keeping that. So we only found one t-shirt. Okay. I was thinking there was a couple. Uh, we're only going to make five bucks and we have 7,000. It's really not that profitable, but it's one less thing. We'll free up an inventory space for us in the future. And there you have it. So we just made $5 um, and we can move on from there. Okay. Real quick, let's see what it's like to interact with somebody. You notice these two are kind of talking. If I right click on one of them, I get a menu of things I can say to them, um, including I can just say what's up. Also, I can click this to get a little bit larger window of things to, that I can say and give me a little more space. Now, is that the guy that walked off? I think it is. So let's, let's click this guy and we'll say, um, we'll make a mildly funny comment. Now we see that he's already a contact, it turns out. So he's already in our social list. So this wouldn't be all that helpful with him. Um, let's go ahead and leave. I'm not seeing leave yet. So he, he replied back to us. Uh, he placed his hand on our arm. So I think we're going to say, um, we're going to say no thanks. Now you'll notice there's effects. For us, we're going to gain autonomy. For them, they're going to lose some respect and intimacy and self-worth. Um, those will impact what our relationship with that person is. So we need to be a little bit careful about that. Um, I can try to change the subject sometimes. Change the subject. Let's click that. Now, while this is processing, I have this, where to go? I don't have that option right now. So let's unpause it. doesn't seem that much is happening here. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and move on. Sometimes you can't leave these conversations until you get a response and there's a leave option. This time it seems like I was able to walk away from this pretty easily. So good to be out of that conversation. Oops, that's inventory. Uh, I meant to click this and then let's go to our ship and we'll take a look around there real quick. All right, this is the airlock for the ship. This is the station's airlock and this is our airlock. And once we come into our ship, the airlocks will open and close. Sometimes you'll get a sound for like low pressure or things like that. But ultimately here we are, this is our ship. Now I chose this ship um, out of the ones that were available because it has a lot of space in it, you'll notice. Uh, first of all, 
the bridge, if that's what you want to call it, is kind of over here. This is the navigation console. Um, there's not a whole lot of other stuff over here that's critically important to the operation of the ship. I like to put uh, battery chargers here for the different tools that we're going to use. And we'll pick some of those up here in a minute. Um, there's a little bit of space back here if we want to drop a couple of things. This is going to be our primary cargo area here. And I'm actually going to take these passenger seats out. We don't even, we don't want them. Don't need them. Uh, not for now. I, I think initially I might leave one in so that I can sit down. You can right click and sit and you'll kind of rest for a minute when you do that. Interesting. He sits that way. I would think that it should face this way, but okay, whatever. Um, there's some air pumps in our ship. There's a lot of stuff that's necessary for functioning. Um, the nav console, obviously, there's these uh, intake regulators, there's thrusters, obviously wall, floor, lights. This stuff here is conduit inside the wall. We can interact with it by right clicking it. Conduit tends to be the top thing and then we would get wall and then the pump that's under it. Now, like the pump takes up floor space, but here, this thing here is a bin. The bin is hung on the wall. You can actually use the floor space under it. So for now, what I'm gonna do, we have that toolbox that has some tools in it. I'm gonna put that under that bin by dropping it on the ground right there. So now you have this bin, which should have nothing in it. Are we paused? We're not paused. Inventory. Yeah, there's nothing in the bin. The bin can hold four items. Toolbox under it can hold three. So, um, well, there you have it. That's that's how bins work. There are corner bins that can hold items. Some bins are bigger than others. There's also bores, bins that can be put in the floor. They're floor bins. Let's take a couple of more seconds to look around and see what we've got here. We have a power switch, which allows us to turn the battery on and off. This is a cooler. It's part of the environmental system. This is a heater, part of the environmental system. Intake regulator maintains air pressure for us. Hey there, editor Chad here again. I have no idea why I said that the intake regulator controls air pressure. It doesn't, and I knew that. It's actually the RCS intake regulator. It controls the thrust or how you get the thrust for your RCS reaction control system, which is what you move around with. Uh, the, the RCS intake uh, is the regulator is is strictly for that. It has nothing to do with the environment system. The air pumps, which are basically um, where my little dude is standing right now, his right shoulder is over the one of the air pumps, but that air pump does not have a canister in it to feed it, so it's it's inactive right now. There are air pumps to control air pressure, but the RCS intake regulator is not that. Sorry for the misinformation. I thought I'd try to catch that now. I will have an episode that goes over the environment system and kind of explains how to put that together and what it does and what it looks like. Okay, back to the main video. Okay, this episode is, uh, I think we've accomplished what I wanted to. I wanted to show you how to get to your ship. I wanted to show you how to pick up the stuff you need to start. And I wanted to show you how these kiosks effectively work. We didn't actually use the kind of the more terminal style kiosks. We used the desks, I guess is what I would call them, or counters, right? We used one of those, but they all function pretty much exactly the same way. Uh, we've seen the inside of our ship didn't identify every last thing. We will clean it up some uh, as we go. Uh, that's an important thing. The ship is in not good shape right now. All of this stuff that's dirty means it's it's in disrepair. We're going to need to fix it. One more thing I do want to talk about. This thing right here, the transponder. The transponder is necessary for navigation. It's what tells them who you are when you're flying around. One other thing here, we have one battery, this ship battery. You'll notice that the, uh, the second line, I guess that's either green or yellow, shows how much charge is in the, the battery. Since we're connected to the station, we're receiving some current from it. Um, once we do uh, undock and fly around, the battery will drain over time. There are some things to mitigate that. We will eventually want to get a second battery. We'll probably put it right here in this one. Um, Oh, I think we can actually put it here, come to think of it. It would allow the power switch to be on top of it, I think. Uh, long story short, though, we'll want to get at least one more battery. Uh, we have a relatively big ship here to power. So that's the important parts. We will investigate a little more about the ship. We will start cleaning it up some. I'll show you how that works. And then we will fly away 
and learn how to dock with a derelict to do some scavenging. We'll do that in the next episode. Appreciate your time this time. And until then, fair travels.